Hey, welcome to Harness Your Intuitive Superpowers, a place where you learn about energy secrets that busy professionals need to thrive and embody extraordinary success and abundance. I am your host. My name is Dr. Amira Hall, and I am super excited today to bring you my guest, Katie Kozlowski. Katie is a master energy healer, and she's an embodiment coach and the creator of the Shakti Bomb. She works with spiritually driven, highly motivated people who are ready to break through energy blocks and patterns that keep them stuck. She helps them work through core belief systems so that they can have breakthroughs and live the life they truly want. Katie's biggest passion is helping people break through patterns that are keeping them stuck in limiting beliefs and ways of living. Katie's wild about watching beautiful souls change and step into the power of who they really are. So with that, I'd like to welcome my guest, Katie Kozlowski. So how wild are you, Katie? Well, it depends on when you meet me on the day, but here we are. We're in Leo season and I'm a Leo rising, so I'm like, I brought my lion hair today, so I think I'm pretty wild. Okay, let's bring the wild woman out and all of us and, and let's shake, rattle and roll. So that where do you begin, me. Katie? How long have you been a an energy healer, embodiment coach? How long have you been doing this work? Yeah, I started my roots, Reiki, things like that. Gosh, now it's like I have to do the math. I was in my 20s and now I'm in my 40s. So we're talking about 20 years of being in the field, learning, studying. But I really delved into some of the deeper work. When I was about 29 years old, I got hit by a taxi, which was like my big awakening moment, really opened my eyes to so much more than than what I really understood about myself in the world. And so then I got very serious and I dove in and rolled my sleeves up and had a spiritual mentor and studied all of the different tools that I work with today. And that was about 13, 14 years ago now. So I've been knee deep in this for quite some time. I probably was born I was born this way, but really the last 14 years or so is, has been the most intense part of my journey. Yeah. Katie, I'm sorry, but I can't help asking, how did you get hit by a taxi, Missy? Didn't you look both ways when you crossed the street? Of course I did. <laughs> you think I didn't see that taxi coming and you think I didn't walk right in front of it? Of course I did. <laughs> I coming. And this is the thing. So when I was in New York City, I was 29 years old, battling self-esteem, self-worth, depression, all of the things that so many of us struggle with. Am I a valuable person? Does anybody love me? And I honestly legitimately felt if I got hit by a car, nobody would care. So I thought, okay, no one will give a shit anyway. So I might as well just go for it. And that literally was my, that was the thought process behind it, which is why I was so shocked when I got hit by the car and all of a sudden I turned into Wonder Woman and I pulled a I pulled a literal superhero move and I rolled on the hood of the car and I did a barrel roll in the street and I popped up and I kept walking. I didn't do what I think that I just I was this is wild. <laughs> it is wild. Yeah. Normal. It's like a, not a normal everyday story. But it was one of those things where I really I've looked at it from many different angles. Was I trying to kill myself? Not really. I don't think that was my intention, but I was in the pits of despair and I felt hopeless and helpless. Well, and when we talk about thoughts create, you literally manifested like that. Your And I thought, okay, here's my chance. And so it just, it happened. I also have a legacy on my father's side. There's actually been three suicides. So I grew up around suicide. And so I have a direct relationship that's in my lineage. People killing themselves was part of my family history, unfortunately. So it was something I grew up around. It was something that I, I was familiar with. And the part that was just really wild for me was that when I did it and it happened and I stood up and I went. Yeah, I'm still here. Like, and I was fine. I wasn't dirty. There were no bones broken. And I, the guy was going like 30 miles, 35 miles an hour. I should have been seriously injured and he didn't stop either. So if I had just laid there in the road, he would have driven right over me. But as I do, plot twist, I decided in that moment, wait a minute, I don't have to do this. I just had acting training. So I knew how to do a barrel roll. I, very wild, but that's how it happened. Big part of my story. 
how I ended up doing what I'm doing because that night I walked home, actually. I refused to go to the hospital because I was fine. And I said, no, I don't need to go to the hospital. I'm not like everybody else. I'm okay. I didn't get hurt. I promise you I'm fine. And I walked. I lived in New York City. So I walked 20 blocks home. And the whole time I had a little dialogue with myself and God. And I said, okay. And when I was a little girl, I spoke to God regularly. So I had this relationship with this higher, this like higher being, this sort of energy, this the universe, right? And I said, okay, I hear you. I understand. I'm not using my gifts to the fullness of their abilities. And I'm not treating myself as if I matter. Please don't, please don't hit me with a car ever again. I promise you, I promise you, I will live the rest of my life. <laughs> it was very, it's a wonderful life or a Christmas carol, like very much. I will change. I will change. I promise. And that was really the beginning of it because after that, there was no going back. And I had seen what I was capable of, which also blew my mind because for me to be able to do that made me feel like, wow, <laughs> maybe there's something that all these things people say about me that I'm this wonderful, special ball of light. Maybe I should actually respect that. Honor yeah, that. be it. Yeah, show up like they see it, but you don't. It seems like we're the last ones to catch up to the vision that other people have of us. And so, kind of. and usually it's our trauma that causes us the breakdowns, but that's also the vehicle to take us through our breakthrough. Can you yeah. talk about that? Yeah. So the trauma, like my personal experience, I had a lot of, obviously growing up as a child around alcoholism, things like that, suicides. I saw a lot of that. So I grew up around a lot of that. Nobody ever physically hurt me. There wasn't any physical harm done to me as a child from that standpoint, but it was very confusing. Growing up, seeing what I could see because I was a very wise, connected child. And I knew that my uncle was going to leave the house and that he was going to end up in a car accident and he was going to hurt somebody else. And that was what led to his sort of downfall because he was already an alcoholic and he was living in our house. My parents were trying to save him. Off he went, ripple effect. And then eventually he killed himself and he was the third one. So things like that were traumatizing, obviously very confusing for me. I had my grandmother on my mother's side, who I absolutely loved. She ended up in a coma when I was about six years old. She had a brain tumor and it was routine surgery. She went to the hospital, was like, no big deal. Grandma's going to be fine. And then they messed up the surgery. And so she was a vegetable. So I spent maybe five years in a hospital with my grandmother in a coma, completely vegetative state, which is also very confusing for a young girl who is also telepathic, who can hear her grandmother. Yeah, I could hear my grandmother. Uh, I was about six. Yeah, I could hear her and everything. And I kept saying, Grandma likes the music. Grandma this, Grandma that. And they're, oh, that's nice. So... Yeah. That was up until, geez, I think they finally, she died when I was 12. So those were some of the, those were like the childhood things that were just around me. Um, and then when I was older, I, I unfortunately had the sexual, the sexual assaults in college and high school, college. I had the girls who bullied me and I had all of these different things. So they stacked on themselves. A lot of it was very subtle. I think that was my most sort of consistent experience traumatically was that the things that happened to me didn't seem like they were that big a deal. Like I was very conditioned to say, hey, you know what? So what? So this guy date raped me. It's OK. This happens to everybody. Which well, is not which is not true, but yeah. that was how I lived my life. And it was like things like that happened all the time. And I really learned to just go and just barrel on through. That's how I could get hit by a car and not not even feel it because I was consistently moving through types of experiences. So I think that was part of what has allowed me to understand the ins and outs of trauma so well because I lived inside of it and I personally experienced it in a lot of different ways. And then also understanding that a lot of the lot of my trauma was being exposed to other people's trauma and not knowing how to deal with it as a child. And that was traumatic in itself. But it, it was the other side of it for me 
So it was things that happened to me were traumatic, but it wasn't as traumatic as the things that happened to the people I loved. And that's what tore me apart. So how do you think resolving some of these traumatic, let's call them energy blocks or patterns or experiences, how does that help us access more abundance or intuition? Yeah. From my understanding and my experience is that Essentially speaking, it's I'll ask clients a lot of times to draw a picture for me and I'll say, okay, so here are here you are and here's the experience that happened to you. Can you show me in a drawing where you are and where the trauma is and how it's connected? And what I'll see a lot is that people will say, okay, so I'm here. I have a belt around my waist and my mother's rejection. Mm -hmm. is way down low. It's very far away from me, but it's deep and it's heavy and it's got me stuck. So that's why I think we really want to resolve it. It's not, we spend so much of our lives trying to go back in the past and make things better. We can't make it better, right? We can't undo the things that have happened. What we really want to learn to do is to understand and accept that whatever happened and do what needs to be done to sever the connection so that you can accept it and move on because we'll never be able to completely I, like I can't go back in time and save my uncles right I wanted to but there's no way doesn't fundamentally exist so I could spend the rest of my life feeling guilty because I couldn't save somebody or whatever it is and that won't allow me to move forward because the guilt connecting me to that experience doesn't let me move on where your thoughts go is so does your energy yeah and, and you can't... all your energies in the past it creates more depression and it creates this is what's really interesting is it creates an anchor like an energetic anchor that's that sort of tethers you to a past experience and it's just an energetic frequency and so when you really understand what it is that you're holding on to or what it is that's got you so stuck energetically speaking and getting clear, is it rejection? Is it abandonment? Is it betrayal? Is it guilt? Is it shame? What is it? What is it? And where is it coming from? Who is it associated with? Why do you think that holding on to that is helping you in some way, shape or form? Because we just, we think unconsciously that by not letting it go, we're doing the right thing, but we're not because we can't move on. And then it's like, you're trying to swim I just like that water analogy because you're trying to swim. You're trying to swim to the next level. You're trying to like swim to the surface and you're treading water and you're running out of energy and you can't get where you want to go and you're frustrated and you want to give up and all and this And you're stuff. overwhelmed and you're frustrated. Yeah, and, and it's you're... just because you're still hooked. What I do is I'm able to go in and say, okay, so here's how this is playing out. It's this experience. It's this exact experience and it's affecting you in this way. And it's just a, it's like a hook. If I can just get your foot out from that rock, all of a sudden you're free. You take off. You go live your life. You go manifest. You create all the things you love. And it's more or less just energetically using all of what you have in a way that is supportive. Because otherwise, we don't realize it how much energy we're using treading water because we're still stuck. You think you're not. and You're like, I'm going. But you're not because you're yeah. still wedged in there. Yeah, it's an illusion, isn't it? And we will do every kind of thing known to man and every trick to try. And we're just, if we don't have guidance, we'll stay stuck in it. Yeah. And this is the thing that, this is why I talk so much about helping specifically, because we all have to get very, we get, as we practice our craft, we get better at understanding what we're really good at, right? What is the mechanism of my method, right? What am I really good at facilitating? And it's that. It's the identification of what has specifically got you stuck and helping you actually cut yourself free. So it's very much, it's very, it's very goddess in nature. If you think about the the Dakini and the Tibetan lineage or some of these goddesses that have knives, right? Like I have sharp tools. I have tools that create the freedom to allow you, if we need a stick of dynamite, we'll get a stick of dynamite. If we need a sword, we use a knife, things like that. And then the other aspect of it is the creative aspect of it, which is that the creative power. So looking at 
paint the imagination, visualization, and putting these two aspects together is such a, for me, it's been really wonderful to put all the pieces together and see, okay, so I'm really good at helping people specifically cut through that block, understand what it is, create the freedom, and then teach them how to swim to the other side. That's a lot of fun. And it also helps me integrate my own story because I did go through a lot. And a lot of people judge people for that. And I've had people go into my energy field and be, oh, damn, girl, what happened to you? You've got a lot of stuff in there. And I'm like, yeah, I do. You know what? I do. I yeah, went that's through- your journey. That's the yeah. journey of this experience as this being in this life. And I go, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you got a problem with it? It's interesting. You bring up a really good point. It's like we are here embodied to have this fucked up journey, whatever lessons, let's call them lessons. And it's not fucked up, but we go through these traumas and these life experiences because for a purpose. And it's yeah. to elevate our soul, to change right. our vibration, to learn and master it. Exactly. It's a, yeah. So I think yeah. in many ways, I think the light leaders have actually a l- larger percentage or a higher amount of life trauma and experiences to push you to make it harder in a way to push harder so that you can release it and then be this amazing light leader. Yeah. I, mean, I think, woohoo, good for you. Look what you mucked up for this I life. Mean, many years later, I've come to accept this about myself, but. There was a period of time when I was I was very resistant to the acceptance. You know, one of the things I teach is you really need to love and accept yourself for who you are if you want to enjoy your life. We can't be apologizing for the things that make us who we are and the things that shaped us. So when I look at all of the different ingredients, yeah, I had a lot of challenging experiences and I went through a lot of different kinds of traumatic experiences. I sometimes when I'm working with people, I say, you know what? There is nothing you could tell me. A lot of people are shy and they say, oh, my my story, I don't want to tell you. I'm embarrassed. And I say, listen, I promise you, I guarantee you that whatever you got, I got something in my bag that matches that. So I probably have been through something that can I can understand in some way, shape or form. Please don't worry about being judged by me because I got a bag of stuff too. And I think that's been the most liberating thing for me is that I don't, I I think when I first got started, I was under the impression that in order to be a leader, like in order to be a someone of value, you had to get to this place where you didn't have that past and you're totally healed. And I have been, I've had people say to me, if you didn't have all that trauma, you you would be more successful. And I go, excuse me, excuse me, what? But (laughs) yeah, that is the thing that allows me to connect with the people that are having challenges. This is why they trust me, right? This is why I know exactly what they're going through because I've been through that and I don't need to cut my arm off and act like I never had that. That's not fair. And I don't think it's positive. I don't think it's helpful. So I've learned to come and fall in love with all of the experiences and say, hey, listen, I've been through stuff. I've had a hard life. I've been through a lot of different challenges. And I know what it feels like. And I actually think that's one of the greatest um, lessons that I've learned through all of this is because of my training and because of my awareness and all of the work I've done, I have been able to go back through each traumatic experience and unwind it from the inside. So I know what it feels like to be paralyzed by fear when you're about to be sexually assaulted by your boss. I know. I remember. I want to get back to our business leaders or professionals or entrepreneurs. When I got this inspiration to do this project, I was feeling like there's a group of people that maybe haven't been immersed in the world of woo or metaphysical, that's the the proper word, or any self-healing perhaps even. I remember being in the corporate world and I couldn't even use the word astrology or or Mercury retrograde or something like that. Now, there are more people that are waking up and I don't think that they know where to go or who to trust or how they can start. And so that's what inspired me. I felt like there's another audience that wants to hear this and that may be really successful in the corporate world or with their business, 
but their life on the inside perhaps is falling apart or crumbling right. or yeah. maybe addicted to sleeping aids or Xanax or all of these other things that's keeping them right. going. So, and I found that if people could find that intuitive aspect to themselves, that superpower within us, that would drive them into even greater success, healing and abundance. And Katie, how do you work with people in terms of trying to raise that vibration to access those superpowers? Yeah. yeah, I think you make a great point. And it's interesting. A lot of my clients are bankers and CEOs and heads of tech firms. There are a lot of people out there who are starting to understand that the, the things like neuroplasticity, right? The way your brain functions, right. cellular memories, things like that, somatics, right? I do a lot of somatic work. And that's one of the things I find that everybody loves. And it doesn't matter whether you're a banker or you're a leader of a company, you're a CEO, a CFO. I am very good at creating tools that are very grounded in reality. So we're not talking big woo-woo terminology and things like that. It's very simple. It's very specific. And it's more about how you feel, right? So how you feel about yourself, how you feel about a certain situation, the way you're responding to that situation, and the way you're behaving. So it's more about the way the energetics take hold in your body and figuring out, okay, so because this person did this, I feel this. And because I feel this, I'm choosing to respond like this. And every time I do this, I end up creating that. So they start to see the chain sort of effect of what happens when you let the experience of something that happened in the past inform the way you create your future. So yeah. it's really Beautiful. grounded, right? It's very yeah. simple. It's easy to understand that, okay, so when I was little, somebody said X, Y, and Z to me. I didn't like the way it felt, so I punched him in the nose. Okay? And now I'm a leader of a company and I feel like everybody is going to come and attack me. So I'm constantly feeling like I need to defend myself and I don't mean to do it, but I'm punching everyone in the nose and that's hurting me. And I know that and I'm doing it this way. I need to learn how to stop punching people in the nose. Can you help me with that? Absolutely. Yeah. It's brilliant. Oh, it's brilliant. Exactly. And when you learn something like that's behavioral, right? It's and it's really fun because it's the way you physically respond, which is the secret ingredient because it's connecting the energetics. So that's connecting with the cellular memories, the neuroplasticity. We're doing all the magic. It's all very magical and mystical and creative and fun, but in the most grounded, systematic way that doesn't feel woo at all. It's very right. simple. Okay. So instead of punching someone, I would like to open my arms like this and say, I'm interested in what you have to say. Yeah, so let's have a discussion. Somebody, something yeah. simple like that, a shift like that is a massive healing because it's freeing yourself from the trauma of the past that's unfortunately recreating it over and over again in your future. You want to create something different? You have to do something different. You have to think differently. So I teach you how to think and you different. you have to feel different, right? Yeah. Yeah. The feeling is the subconscious aspect of it. And this is something people don't always think about, but your body is a reflection of your subconscious. So this is how I figured all this out because when I started to understand that for me, a lot of times in my life, I would get to the moment, like the big breakthrough moment. I kept trying to create more of what I wanted in life. But because of my experiences, my traumas, my sexual traumas in particular, the way I had responded was to shut down. So I had learned how to duck and cover and fold in on myself whenever I felt vulnerable, which meant that it didn't matter what I was doing now, whether it was a relationship, whether it was sales, whether it was writing a book, whether it was standing out there in the world and saying, I'm Katie and I created the Shakti Bomb method and it's cool and you should try it because it will change your life. It was like, oh no, I can't do that because dee, 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 dee. And it went back to the way I felt because of the, any time I had ever been hurt, I had a somatic reaction. So I needed to break that pattern and teach myself instead of folding in on myself when I felt scared, I had to teach myself how to an unfurl. And so all of those blocks are shutting down our intuitive superpowers. 
our, <laughs> our natural abilities to go with the flow, to trust, to make good decisions, to take risks that perhaps you wouldn't normally do. And how about having fun and enjoying life? All of those things. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense because I teach people this a lot. It's very, I see us, I think the Vitruvian man is a great example. When you look at that drawing, there is a person who's very centered, equally balanced, arms wide, legs spread wide, totally vulnerable, not protecting themselves, connecting with the quantum field, which happens to be a ginormous globe. It's a, it's a spherical entity. It's round. It's everywhere. It's all around us. And the more you're connected to that, the more open you are. So it, to me, it makes perfect sense, right? The more grounded you are, the more present you are, the more open you are to receive the magic and the miracles that are available all around us. But and, if you're like- I know fighting, that. It doesn't Absolutely. And can you give an example of some figures, some celebrities or people that you know you know, I actually, I really like Lady Gaga. I think Lady Gaga is one of those people that is really connected to the creative life force. She's a, to me, she's that classic, I call it the mad witch, bad bitch. It's the wild, powerful, like leader. She's brilliant. passionate. Oh, and she's smart. She's a businesswoman and she does all these different things, but she's also grounded and she's kind and she speaks well. And she's she just has a very mature way of handling herself that's very grounded. Yeah. I think she's a great example. Really, truly, I often think of her. Beyonce has some of that going on. But these are pop stars. Pink. OK, I love Pink. I think Pink is brilliant. And I think she's another one that's very... In, in that sort of frame of mind. But business, there, there's people in all different aspects. You could look at Oprah. You could look yeah, at... Yeah, she's the one that comes to mind for everybody. She's yeah. created a ginormous business and presence for herself. And talk about her healing her trauma. And herself. in alignment and authentic. So I think that really, if you look at that and you look at the trajectory of what we're talking about, we're talking about these words that people say now, like conscious leadership. You're conscious, you're aware, and you don't have to be super woo. Like you don't have to do astrology and tarot cards and things like that. What it means is that you're present mm -hmm. and you're conscious and cognizant of the world around you and that your thoughts and your actions create a ripple effect, which means you're thinking about other people just as much as yourself, right? Like you're thinking about what you need and also that every single thing you do has a ripple effect, which means that your employees, the people, your fans, right? It's this beautiful full circle embodiment of people who are focused and connected and clear and showing up in a way that really is in service to the world because... I, yeah, I'm thinking of the movie, The Avatar. Yeah, yeah. Where everything's plugged in and we're understanding our connection to our environment and yeah. to each other, but that our soul and our heart are also reflect the world around us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And even I'm thinking about, I don't want to leave, I know I, I mentioned a lot of women, but even like Steve Jobs, I think has had, I don't know the fullness of everything, but I know my brother happens to work for Apple. So I know a little bit more, but the philosophy of that, when they built that, it was to be in service to humanity. It was to create a work environment for their employees that was, positive. And he's also an example of somebody that did this in a tech world. And also I'm thinking of that Nike, right? That movie Air, that shows you another aspect of innovation and leadership that's really inspiring. Intuition. Yeah. Very I mean, cool. And really trusting it and yeah. going against the grain. Yeah. That movie was what, that's a great one. If people haven't seen that, that movie air, it's inspiring to see that story. And that really happened. That was a real thing. And I think that's another really great way of seeing the ripple effect because they brought in the right people and that person knew that they wanted to help other people. And it was set up in such a way that it created a lot of wonderful things for a lot of people, a lot of opportunities, growth. That's a beautiful Yes, but it all starts with us, right? And so some of us get ahead of ourselves and some people, I work with many very successful clients and they get all tangled up. And so it all comes back to honoring who we are and 
following that intuitive path and going against the grain, even when it seems scary. Can you tell us a time when you had to, you were faced with that, trusting your uh-huh. intuition, yeah. and it was scary as hell, and it didn't even make logical sense? I think that, honestly, everything that I've done with this whole method, this shocky bomb, creating my own my own method, right? Innovating, integrating, because I came through a spiritual community. Okay. And I was one of many students. I was also one of the younger students. I was also one of the more aesthetically looking like this students. So there was a lot of judgment thrown <laughs> my way, just meaning I have blonde hair and I'm curvy. So people's perception of me was, she's not smart. Look at her. Look at the way yeah. she's dressed. Right. She's wearing a pink tennis skirt. She thinks she understands consciousness. She's dressed like a Barbie, like this sort of stuff. But I'm serious. And I know. I've been through the... I've, yeah. And it was... Yeah. yeah. And, it, and I'm poking fun, but also it really happened. And when I first arrived there, I was the same person I am. I was positive, right? I was like, hey, this is going to be great. I'm going to learn and I'm excited and I just am so excited to be here and I'm eager and I understand. And I was like a sponge soaking stuff up. And from the very first day, innovating, going, okay, so I'm learning this in NLP and he's talking about consciousness. And if I go out on the street today in New York City and I apply this to my energy field, I want to see what it does to the cat callers. And it was great. I went out there. I watched their energy bounce off me and hit them in the chest. And I saw guys fall over. And I was like, this is awesome. Look at I'm innovating. I'm learning. Yeah. You're in the on the job training. (laughs) Oh, it was so great, though. And I, it was hard for me because there was judgment. There was shade thrown my way. There was a lot of, you're not allowed to do this. You can't do this. Who do you think you are? And I kept saying, but I, but I know what I'm doing. And this is really cool. Why can't I innovate? Why can't I take what my teacher is offering and turn it into my own thing? That's what he's asking us to do. That's the point, right? Knowledge is available. We can all create what we want. Why are you all being so mean? But I ended up I ended up like being kicked out because of all the bullying and all of the judgment. And they were there were people who talked badly about me. There were people who threw parties who purposely uninvited me. Oh. I went through all this mean girls drama in my spiritual community. And it was very terrifying because I created my own method. I innovated. I yep. used the NLP. I did this. I did that. And I, and I had to really walk on my own. And I didn't have the endorsement of my teacher. He said, you're great. Good luck. But I said, could you like tell everybody that I'm not doing anything bad here? Nope, you're on your own. And I go, OK, that's my lesson. But well, that's yeah. I mean, that's that, it. There. That, that I think on the path, we, the, part of the lesson is not putting our teachers on a pedestal. Oh, absolutely. sometimes those hard knocks and lessons are actually the greatest teacher because you got oh. removed from an environment that was probably going to hold you back. Yeah. And this is, I've been through many different sides of being mad at him, thinking he was bad. And at the end of the day, I say, you know what? Listen, it wasn't his responsibility to promote me even. If I want to do this with my life, it's my responsibility, which has been a very empowering thing because I have to learn how to stand on my own two feet and take ownership for what I created because it's mine. I own right? It belongs to me. And this is what I teach every single, in every meditation. It's one of the things I always say towards the end of it is this belongs to you are the one that created this. I didn't do it. So making sure that every single person is unique and empowered in their own expression is very important to me because I learned that and it breaks codependency and it teaches sovereignty and it just, it, it creates a really strong sense of self. All of that at the end of the day, I know it. And I also know that if I hadn't, if he hadn't basically said, you need to get out of here, I would have still been like clinging to his ankle because looking for validation. I wanted him to tell me that it was okay, And I knew he was like, no, I'm never going to tell you it's okay because it doesn't matter. What if I told you it wasn't okay? Right. And what? Yeah. No, they did you a favor. No. Yeah. So every part of and that was a lot of my high school experience, my college, same thing happened in college. It was a lot of the same experiences over and over again, which was, who do you think you are? You think you're so great? I'm like, yeah, actually, I do think I'm great. And I think you're great. So if I'm great and you're great, what's the problem here? Why are you being so nasty? 
Oh, There's something yeah. for everybody. You go be great. Don't worry about me. We're all good. No, I I experienced a lot of that myself. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. yeah. I think just the natural tendency is unless you're with a group or a mind mindset of people that want to elevate and validate people around them and praise their success, most people want to pull them down. It's called competition, right? Yeah. And so they don't want you to shine brighter because then it's really reflecting on them where they need to do their work and they're resisting doing their work. So that's what you've got is you've got that that game of oh, yeah. bullying going on. Yeah. But, and it's not fun and it doesn't no. help anybody. And for me, I go, listen, this just isn't necessary. I don't need to be in competition with anybody. And at the end of the day, because we're all unique and we're all different, I would rather see you. I always say when I have programs or when I'm working with people, I say, look, for me, it's like we're all Marvel characters. We're all superheroes. We each have a super superpower. One person can be invisible. One can shoot lasers out their eyes. One's really big and strong, right? Everybody's different. Everybody has gifts. My job is to make sure that you're using your gifts to the best of your ability because I want everybody to be out there as the Marvel superhero that they're here to be. We need everybody doing what they came here to. Everybody should be living fully expressed because that's how we're going to change the world because we're all superheroes. So why aren't we using our superpowers? Why aren't yeah. we raising one another up and celebrating? I love the way you smash those walls with your sledgehammer. And once you do that, I'll use my power to grow the new grass or there's just all these yeah. different ways to look at it. When we all work together, it just is more fun. Yeah. So yeah, we are creators. As the great book says, you're made in the likeness and image of the creator. So right. I know you've got a great giveaway, a gift to share with our audience yes. on how they can, I think you called it move, groove and meditate. It sounds move, yummy. Yeah. Move, groove and meditate. Yeah. Very simple. It's basically an introduction to everything we're talking about. So teaching you how to use your body to help you actually create the life you want. So there's movement and it's meditation. I People some sort of sometimes scratch their heads and go, that's not meditation. And I said, oh no, listen, that's the beauty of it. You don't have to sit in lotus with your eyes closed to meditate. You can use your body. If you like to actively create, I like to actively create when I meditate. I love that. So it teaches you how to basically craft your day, craft your life, create what you want through this practice. And it's the beginning steps, but it's the one piece that I started doing that changed my life. It's like the one thing that really did make big changes for me. It's fun. It is fun. Move, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, I think the groove part has got me moving and I'll go right into the meditation part of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's so awesome. Yeah, so I am delighted to share that and with all of our listeners. And I'm going to dive in as soon as I get the chance. Katie, I am grateful for you joining us today and sharing all your wisdom and wonderful stories. I'm sure that some of them weren't so wonderful when you were going through them. It's incredible how far you've come and what you've done. It's truly an inspiration. So, so thank you. Thank you so much for being here and sharing that with us. Thank you. My yeah. honor. Oh, so everybody go ahead and click the link and get Katie's Move, Groove, and Meditate offer and get connected with Katie, all right? And I will see you back again for our next interview. I appreciate all of you. Continue shining bright.